I don't want you to come to the wedding. Don't act like you saved my life just because you donated your goddamn kidney. <laughs> Get the hell home. You'll regret this. Like hell I will. Trouble Busters. My name is Alan. Huh, it's hard. It's so hard and it's so painful. I've always said that I'd get sick when I see your face, didn't I? I'm 35 years old, and despite being invited to my younger brother's wedding, I was being showered with harsh aspersions. I hate you more than anyone has ever hated someone in the history of the world. The children of the family consisted of Seth, my younger brother who was born with a weak immune system, and myself who has hardly ever been sick. At first my brother was positively envious of my health, but then he started to feel resentful until that eventually turned into hatred. As time went on it became worse, and now… Yeah, what an eyesore! Rather than becoming someone respectable, he became a truly sickly, bitter, hateful, arrogant bastard. I'd let your attitude slide if it were just the usual day, man. But just for today, even if our relationship isn't good, I'd like to keep it normal for your sake as well as mine. I'm not gonna take orders from a person who didn't go to freaking university. Give that to me! What the? Don't act like you saved my life just because you donated your goddamn kidney. <laughs> Get the hell home! <laughs> Why the hell would you? Ah, because you frickin' say arrogant, presumptuous bullshit. Do you understand that all you can freaking do with your life is offer me a stupid kidney? How could you say that? It's not like I offered it to you without any hesitation whatsoever either, you know. I felt so concerned and conflicted, but I made the decision because you're my family and my only younger brother. Do you realize that? That kind of third-rate tear-jerking story won't ever freaking move my heart in the first place, buddy. I didn't ask you to give me that kidney of yours. Excuse me? Who actually asked you, eh? It was frickin' mom and dad, and as you can see, I'm doing absolutely fine. And whether you were there to help me or not, I would have just managed well to get by on my own. How dare you? Don't you freaking act like a big brother to me, huh? How much do you want a share of my benefits, eh? Unlike you, I went to college, and I'm gonna be happily married in a few hours. Your only good thing is that you're healthy. I'm nothing like you, and I'm far better than you. <laughs> when I was forced to take a long break from work, my kind boss, Mr. Sanderson, and the company president himself, Mr. Donovan, told me, we need you on the team, buddy, so please come back as slowly as is necessary. And there you have it. Can you fathom just how competent I am in my job? I wonder if you, Alan, received the same words from the department head and the president, eh? <laughs> that is something that could have ended your life and therefore not something you should be proud of. I've been saying this for a while now, but you are too damn ungrateful to those around you. You really honestly think you've survived this far on your own? Don't come and lecture me like you're my big brother. Answer the question, Seth. Hey, security, there's a strange man here who doesn't have an invitation. Uh, you little- This bastard is uninvited. Get him out of here as quickly as possible. Seth! That was the moment when all the patience I had built up had reached its limit and my fury exploded. My brother, who mistakenly thought he had come this far in life alone without any help from other people, will receive the punishment he deserves. Unforgivable! Trouble busters initiate! You'll regret this. Like hell I will! Seth, sit down. It'll start soon. Ah, yeah, sorry about that. And now, a speech from the friends and family of the groom, Mr. Seth Thompson. As esteemed guests of this momentous occasion, please welcome Mr. Adam Sanderson, the groom's boss, close friend, and partner, to the stage. 
Thank you, miss. As I've just been introduced, my name is Adam Sanderson, and I'm proud to call myself a friend of the groom tonight. First of all, when talking about the man of the hour, there is one person who cannot be left out as the most influential in his life. His older brother, Mr. Alan Thompson. It all happened the year the groom suddenly became seriously ill. Our company adopts an annual salary system, you see, and we were forced to make a difficult decision about the contract regarding the groom, who showed no prospect of returning. At the right moment, however, Alan, the groom's beloved older brother, appeared and changed everything. Please, Mr. Director, Mr. President, cheat, deceive, lie, I do not care, sir. Please pretend to renew his contract. If the contract is not updated, my brother will finally notice his condition and will surely fall into despair. Please spare him that. I don't want to cause Seth any more hopelessness in his life than he already has. And that's what swayed the President into making a decision. I decided that Seth would stay with us and we would take care of him responsibly. Alan's handling of the situation was so moving. What a wonderful brotherly love. Oh, uh, amazing. Mr. Alan, so amazing as always. What do you mean by as always? Uh, he did it for you, Seth. You ought to know what Mr. Sanderson's talking about. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, as always, uh, my big b brother Alan is amazing. That's right. I'll do everything I must to support you, so please take care of Seth. That's what he said, I hear. He is loved and trusted by all the people at work, I hear, and everyone, especially all the superiors and executives, feel like a weight was lifted off their shoulders all at once. I, I didn't realize that my brother cared about me that much. <laughs> oh, so he's not only the one who actually saved your life, but he's also Cupid for our love in a way. See? Right. <laughs> God damn, that's true. Yes, hello? Please, Alan, come back immediately. Everyone at the ceremony just won't freaking stop praising you for what you did to help. If it's discovered that I turned such an influential person away at the reception desk, I... Please, I might actually lose everything. You're right in the middle of the ceremony, aren't you? Get back out there. Right now is drink, dine, and chat time, dude. I'll have to get back out there soon for real. Unfortunately, I'm an uninvited bastard and the invitation was torn to shreds by the groom himself, so I can't enter anymore. I'll admit you! I'll personally admit you! Sounds arrogant. Nope, I'm good. Please! Mom, Dad, Mr. Sanderson, Mr. Donovan, they all must be calling you whenever they get a chance now. Yep, there are so many emails to respond to and calls left unanswered. Just please, for now, come back right away and join in the festivities. In how many minutes will you be back at the venue? <sighs> Always thinking about yourself, huh? Who said I was coming back, eh? I told you, didn't I? I told you when I left. You'll regret this. Like hell I will. Well, let's just say that spat was a genuine mistake on my part. What the hell did I do that pissed you the frick off? You were so eager to tell me how much you hate me. No, you were acting all high and mighty, and that's what got me so damn fuming. There's a limit to what you can accuse me of doing, you know. I get it, I get it. What did you get? I'm sorry, too. As I thought, you don't get anything. Please just get back over here. You're my older brother, aren't you? You're a saint, aren't you? I'm not a goddamn saint, Seth. I'm just an older brother whose priority has always been for my only little brother. So you'll come right back. Well, that unfortunately ended in disaster when you made it clear it was one-sided brotherly love on my part. I didn't want to make it seem like you owed me anything, which was why I kept quiet about everything that had happened up until now. But... Terrible! Bail? In the end, you're making me owe you everything now. 
How can you retaliate in this hopeless situation? I can sense you feeling slightly shrewd to have others say good things about you instead of you saying that shit yourself. I get it. I get it now. What do you get? From now on, I will not have any involvement with you regardless of what happens to you. Wait a minute, why does it come to that? If I stop helping you, then I, and of course other people, will stop saying nice things about me directly to your face, right? Huh? Then what will it mean for you to be an older brother? What do you want me to do in the end, huh? You should be active, but behind the scenes, all right? Oh, active behind the scenes, huh? That's right. All sorts of things, including myself, are only where they are right now thanks to your great support, apparently. <laughs> I'm grateful for this, I'll tell you. I really want to meet this gentleman, Alan, soon. Oh, that's right. You haven't met Alan yet, have you? I'm really sorry about this whole thing. I can't believe Alan, who cares so much for his little brother, is late on such an important day. Hey, can't you get through to him? About that. He's apparently been on the phone for a while now, and I can't get through to him at all. Don't hang around me, alright? Just move around like a shadow, doing your bidding as you must without anyone knowing about anything. Act like a guy who looks like a child but thinks like an adult detective. Why do I have to be so freaking careful about supporting and assisting my loving sibling, huh? Eh? And another thing, I think your true identity and abilities have already been revealed. You shut the frick up! Every single one of them talked like it was a magical spell that you had imposed upon the lives of many. Many of whom believed it to be work of a saint, while I think of it as the work of the goddamn devil. Seth has become who he is today, all thanks to Alan and his incredible support. Eat my freaking ass, bucko! I resent that insinuation with a passion! Unlike you, I graduated from university, you know? Compared to me, who's as weak as a toothpick, you're in good health, but you're very uneducated. It's really pathetic. Dad always tells me that you didn't go because you didn't want to be a burden to anyone, but you're just a freaking hypocrite. All of this is just your charm speaking so many people and turning it into a heroic story to hide your stupidity. No, I actually could go, but... Yeah, yeah, keep talking, that's just what you think. Even if you didn't have to go to the president directly, with my abilities I would have been taken care of until I returned, that's for sure. You definitely did all this to make the pathetic Alan Thompson look like a knight in shining armor. Everyone snatched up in your stupid trap. Mom, Dad, Lisa, her parents, Mr. Sanderson, President Donovan. All of them are pathetic, useless, brainwashed pieces of shit who don't know how to use a lighter properly. Honest to God. You're, You're the, the pathetic, pathetic, useless piece of shit, you, you goddamn, goddamn maggot. maggot. Ah. Hey, Mr. Sanderson? Uh, President Donovan? You. You disrespectful, stupid, writhing, stinking asshat! No, sir! No, sir! Uh, this is a big misunderstanding! I truly, truly didn't do anything wrong here! Nothing suspicious, nothing heinous, nothing at all! Oh, no! Hey! I'm not done with you yet, young man! Alan, it's me, buddy. Ah, oh, Director Sanderson, good evening. Uh, could you explain to me, please, what the heck is going on? What the hell? Since it was Director Sanderson's personal request, I had the taxi make a U-turn and I returned to the ceremony venue. As soon as I entered the hall, the situation I beheld was shocking. Seth donned an extremely distressed expression on his face. He was deathly pale, and he looked very out of breath. <laughs> uh, welcome, Alan brother. Uh, please, uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, nah, 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 what are you saying now after chasing me out, huh? 
No, I'm, I'm sure you left because you forgot something, right? No, I was kicked out of the venue. Admit to your mistakes, Seth. That's right. There's no way Alan would lie about this. Uh, you gave us quite the display when you were insulting your brother, buddy. Truly the embodiment of ungrateful selfishness. Even if you didn't have to go to the president directly, with my abilities I would have been taken care of until I returned, that's for sure. My ass, you would have perished. The reason you were able to stay at the company at all was largely due to Alan's input. No, that was the only reason. Uh, please, sir, wait a moment. I would appreciate it if you thought about the current situation. I'm getting married today. It's my, it's, <laughs> it's the happiest day of my life. It's absolutely preposterous to attack me. It's too much. The misunderstanding I caused you will be over as soon as the wedding ceremony is- There's no need to wait. What? The marriage is off. Forever. Wait a second. Why? What are you doing? Why, you ask? Are you actually serious right now? Do I really need to explain? I think you know why. You're talking about my brother, right? But even so, that... it's a misunderstanding! It can't be a misunderstanding! You proposed to me in the third year of our relationship, but honestly, I was really hesitant. Hesitant? Why? Because if something goes wrong for you, you immediately say you're so unlucky because of your condition and don an unattractive, cutesy, attention-seeking character, don't you? What? No, no, I don't! What the hell? No, you do, buddy. That could literally be your selling point if you were hired as a Karen. And that's coming from me, the president of a company. Whenever you reported some kind of accomplishment to me or Director Sanderson, you said things like, you didn't think a person in my situation would go this far, did you? And you always shout, I'm unlucky in the office, don't you? Are you trying to deceive us or something? Almost all of the work you left unfinished, especially the important tasks, Alan brought home with him to clean your slate. Well, you're the one who didn't have enough gratitude for that. Even when the amount of work you were given was reduced, your reaction was reportedly, I don't know what happened, but I have less work to do. I'm so lucky. That was what you thought, wasn't it? Alan never failed to be by your side in times of hardship. No matter how many insults and aspirations you said to him, he had done a great job as your older brother for 35 years. There aren't many people who are as capable as your older brother, Seth. I'll support him in his rather childish parts of his, so please take care of my little brother. That's what he said, bowing his head to me so many times it moved me to tears. You even went so far as to do all that? I was wondering if you would just become an ex-boyfriend of mine, but the catalyst that drove me to decide to marry you? I thought that if I could become relatives with such a wonderful person, I would feel relieved and reassured for the rest of my life. Lisa, did you really think that? But that was in the past! How can a person who can't take good care of someone like Mr. Allen take care of anyone else? No, listen, this is not what you think! What am I so wrong about, huh? Not only was my invitation ripped to shreds by the groom himself, he called the security guards on me who almost grabbed my shoulders and arms to force me out. Uh, that's too ridiculous! What kind of little brother would do that? Shall I call the security guards who almost dragged me out then? Uh, there's no need to do that! No, there is. There isn't! Meanwhile, I shall completely believe what Alan says here. You and Mr. Allen have completely different levels of trustworthiness. And Allen was the person responsible for getting you this far. A foolish thing you did. I didn't chase Alan away. It's all a lie. A lie to blackmail me. He's simply trying to ruin me. Even if that were true, would have been long gone without Alan's unwavering love for you and determination to help. Look back at the work you've done up until this point!
Wasn't Alan always there watching over you? If you truly look back, he was there. It's the same at home. Alan was the one who was more worried about you than anyone else. Uh, I knew it. His education fees are so expensive, to be honest, honey. What should we do? If things continue like this, we won't be able to send Seth to university. I'll contribute to that, guys. Don't worry. Don't bother carrying everything by yourselves. Oh, son. We help each other out at times like these, don't we? That's what a family is. Uh, but that could only mean... <laughs> Buddy, listen. Honestly, we've made you put up with so many things. Too many things. Isn't it so hard to endure all of that and give so much only to receive so little? Alan clearly said that it was never hard to endure if he only thought about his adorable little brother. It's preposterous to claim that such a man would threaten to ruin you at this stage in life. It's a lie that has such low reality and what's more, calling your brother who is your ultimate greatest benefactor a liar and refusing to let him attend the wedding ceremony on the happiest day of your life is the most heinous act done by a most despicable man. Your sense of ethics is so broken that I think a grizzly bear waking up from hibernation would be more rationally logical than this. No! Please! Mom! Dad! Hold it right there. I would rather you stop calling us by those names. Huh? What? I am tired of your lack of sensitivity and I am so astonished I can't find the love anymore. I would have turned a blind eye if you were just the usual insults, but when it comes to physically banishing family from a momentous occasion like this, I will not let that slide. Listen, I didn't know that Alan had been taking care of me so much. That's the problem. If you were too young to understand the severity of this, it would be different. But you're already 30 and a full-fledged adult. It's bad enough that you didn't realize anything, but what's worse is that you lied to try and cover your actions up. And there's no apology to Alan. This is the final blow for you, the blow to destroy all lingering hope for you. W what do you mean? What do you mean? Pack your bags by the end of this month. You're going to live somewhere else. Hey, hey wait a minute. Do, do I just have to apologize? The, the moment, moment you ask if you have to apologize shows that you have, no, that you have intention no intention to apologize, to apologize bucko. bucko. Wait, please. It's unprecedented to be told familial ties will be severed the day someone is to be married. The engagement is off, too. Off? And of course, since it was broken off because of you and your problems, you pay for the wedding fees, all right? That's not fair. If the engagement's off, you pay half of the damn money, too. Oh. That right there, I cannot sympathize with that part of you whatsoever. I'm sorry to make a comparison here, but Mr. Allen would never say something like that, not in a million years. You're completely finished now. Wait a minute. My condition? I wasn't actually feeling too well since this morning, and, uh, well, it just, uh, it made things like uh, cognitive thinking and sound judgment uh, really damn hard, you see? Uh, uh, why the frick is my immune system this way? God damn it, I'm so unlucky. The hell do you mean unlucky, you damn bitch? No one is as lucky as you to have so many people around you to help. The hell do you mean wasn't feeling too well, eh? You were laughing and eating a good deal of food until Alan showed up, weren't you? Shit, there's no one here who could be an ally? Please reflect on what you have done and do your best next year at your next workplace. Next year? At a new workplace? Alan's help will cease. We will not be able to include you in our plans for the team starting next year onwards. No, 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 please. My parents, my wife, my job. Will I lose everything? You have done so much. Those are the rightful consequences for you. Uh, <laughs> Alan! I'm sorry, man, but I will also end our relationship as brothers as well. What? Why? 
You take helping others for granted far too much, which is why you were able to commit such an outrageous act this time without any hesitation. This could be a rough treatment for such a diagnosis, but try your best alone with nothing but your wits and willingness to live. That's impossible, sir. Please, let me start over with a job like a janitor, a coffee maker, even an errand boy. Please let me start over with one of those low-life jobs. Low-life low jobs? What? Why? I, to show remorse, I, this is noble, right? Uh, great, right? Grand, right? Do you consider janitors, coffee makers, and errand boys like that? You've made such a huge number of huge mistakes, and you still don't get it? Are you still gonna dig your own damn grave? There is no such thing as a low-life job worker in our company. I now understand all too well that not only are you so dismissive towards the people who support you directly, but also towards the people who clean and do chores. Burn in hell, Seth Thompson. I get it. I apologize. What, what are, are you, you apologizing, apologizing for? for? I don't freaking know. Malfunction detected. Malfunction detected. I'm not myself at the moment. I'm not feeling well. And I say things that are not my intention. Ah, this is no good. I can't organize my thoughts. I guess I'm really not feeling well. That has to be it. Whenever I feel better, I'll immediately reflect on my actions. Honest. Why don't people understand this? I'm in so much pain. Hey, are you listening? Hey, listen to me. Of course, no one listened to him as he boasted about his weakened condition being in an I'm so weak, oh help me mood that's always been convenient for him. In the end, Seth was abandoned by his parents, siblings, relatives, fiancé, and colleagues, and was left alone with his wits and willingness to live. He was under contract for the next year, but the mess he made at his wedding became known to everyone in the workplace, so he withdrew of his own accord and left the company. No one knows where he is or what he's doing now. Unless he changes his personality, he will continue to live his life as he himself says. I'm so unlucky. Nothing else will await him, and only he can make the change. On the other hand, as soon as I no longer had to support Seth, my mobility skyrocketed. I produced four times the results I had before, and I won a big boost to my salary for the next season. I was blessed with a good family and a good job. And I thought the next step would be to get married, but tickle me pink, the president's daughter herself took an interest in me, and I had the pleasure of meeting her. She's a beautiful, warm-hearted, wonderful person. I hope things will go smoothly and we'll get married in no time. Trouble Busters.